Welcome to our chemical science. I'm Jordan, an open source researcher who investigates ideas that are usually either very old, very new, or very esoteric. It sounds like I've used a clickbait title in this video, but I, I think it's an understatement, really. Um, some really big things are happening right now, and Bob Grainier is breaking loose, and he continues to make major leaps forward in piecing together both the science and the history of ball lightning research. Malcolm Bendel's thunderstorm generator is making similarly huge waves, and it's becoming clear that this is potentially way, way bigger than even I thought it was in the beginning. And you know I thought it was already going to be big, um, having spent hundreds of hours studying Malcolm's work and independently covering the developments around the thunderstorm generator since its low-key public reveal at Tesla Tech last year. I've got a number of important things to mention in this update, but let's start with all of that. Bob Grainier and the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project recently published two videos on their YouTube channel. Uh, one of them was a live stream titled Intrigue, which I've linked to in the description, and I highly encourage you to go and watch the full video if you have the time. Although this is something that only a few thousand people are probably following right now, um, while the big world events occupy everyone's minds, in this video Bob quietly and humbly announces that the whole world is about to change. The US Navy has been both carrying out and suppressing cavitation or ball lightning research since the 60s. And Russia's also been carrying out similar research, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this isn't hearsay, it's true, and Bob makes the statements with numerous supporting facts uh, in his videos. So we've seen the work of a number of researchers at this stage um, of these phenomena, ball lightning, uh, cavitation, plasmoids, pop up over the decades, um, which always immediately follows with them being discredited, attacked, suppressed, or sometimes even jailed or killed or committed to an insane asylum. I always like to use Wilhelm Reich as an example. Uh, they burned actual tons of his writing and notes, uh, they destroyed his inventions, they jailed him, and then he was mysteriously killed a day before getting he was supposed to get out of jail. Meanwhile, Ken Shoulders was funded by the US Navy to research these same ideas that Reich was suppressed, discredited, and ultimately died for, like he directly studied uh, some of Reich's work um, in his investigations. And this is just one direct example that I've come up with. Um, Bob provides a number of others in his videos there. So this has happened. It is a part of the history of science, um, and we're about to find out just how much has been held back from being used for the advancement of civilian technology, like power for homes, businesses and farms, medical technology, environmental remediation and transport, just to name a few. And it, it's still happening, this suppression, in fact. Um, we've seen an enormous amount of attack on Malcolm Bendel over the thunderstorm generator, and Bob's experienced this directly himself, too. Uh, he says in the video, the US Navy have directly interfered with his work in the past, uh, and we've seen numerous hit pieces on anyone who touches these ideas, uh, Bob even calls out Robin Murray Smith uh, in the video for his slew of recent hit piece videos on cold fusion and ball lining researchers. And you know, this one hurt a bit for me to hear. Uh, I learned a lot from Robin Murray Smith. Uh, I've bought and read his books. I've been a paid member of his channel for years. Um, I've made many comments uh, on his channel from my personal account. But I absolutely agree with uh, Bob and Malcolm when they say that some of his latest videos have seemed overwhelmingly like intentional hit pieces uh, and it seems pretty likely he's part of some wider agenda. I mean, the guy's not an idiot. Um, he knows that this stuff is real and that there's been significant research, research done in this area. He reads a lot of papers. I've watched hundreds of his, his videos, um, and I know he's not an idiot. So I'm ruling that out. Um, a lot of people know about cavitation, ball lightning, and cold fusion. We know this. Uh, we can prove this. It has been proven. Low energy fusion is not something that's restricted to uh, some hyper advanced reactor that costs trillions of dollars to build either. Um, it's happening right now in a retrofit that costs only hundreds of dollars to produce, uh, called the thunderstorm generator. Everyone knows, um, you know, it's common knowledge that the military and particularly the Navy um, have been many decades ahead in technology. And this has been justified for various reasons by very, various people. You know, I'm not going to get into that. There, it's it's complicated ethics. I don't know the answers to these things. Um, many of these people have had good intentions, and I'm not really making judgments here. I just want to move forward, um, and I want to see these technologies implemented um, and making our lives a little easier, making some of these problems less pressing. Um, but this is why and how uh, the military is so far ahead. It is this type of research, ball lightning, cavitation, uh, ways to produce energy that are not taught in normal institutions and are not funded. 
And of course, uh, the radical suppression of science hasn't just been orchestrated by the US Navy. Uh, the Space Force Lieutenant General Stephen L. Quast, uh, sorry if I didn't pronounce his rain, name right, um, he sp speaks quite candidly about what's been happening uh, in the following clip I'll play here. Energy, the seed corn of all development, all growth, all survival, survival, energy. So energy, transportation, information, and manufacturing, these are the things that change humanity, that will change world power, and they are descending upon us in ways that are very unique. The technology is on the engineering benches today, but most Americans and most in Congress have not had time to really look deeply at what's going on here. But I've had the benefit of 33 years of studying and becoming friends with these engineers and these scientists. This technology can be built today with technology that is not developmental to deliver any human being from any place on planet Earth to any other place in less than an hour, to deliver Wi-Fi from space where you never need a cell tower to connect, to deliver energy from space where you never have to plug your phone in and it trickle charges and you can use that energy over time. It can be applied to cars, to houses, the technology of Edison and Tesla that we live with in our energy environment, our paradigm today, is expensive, it's dangerous, and it's wasteful. Plug it into the wall, but yet that's all what we all do because we are used to paradigms. The power of space will change world power forever. And it doesn't have to be a big country to do it. It can be a small island country, let's say New Zealand. Because the technology, if optimized, can change world power, and there's nothing you can do if you don't have that power. The nature of power. You either have it, and your values rule, or you do not have it, and you must submit. We see that play out again and again in history, and it's playing out now. But we get trapped. The foundational laws of physics, electrical engineering, and chemistry that have been taught in education institutions are only partially true. And in the best case scenario, we could say that the power of a mission has been intentionally employed and abused in startling ways to ensure that most students and professors have been funded to be continuously kept in the dark, uh, to never look or question too deeply or to make any claim too big outside of the paradigm that's being promoted. And I've personally spoken to countless academics at this point uh, about this fact, and it remains the primary reason I cannot and will not submit myself to higher education. I refuse to pay... Um, or to be funded to waste my life, build weapons, or specialize in developing a single electrical component for a decade. Uh, and yet, I still wish to be a scientist. It's a conundrum. Uh, and I know for a fact that many of you feel the same. Essentially, there's a huge shift going on right now. Um, and it may not be too far off that we can actually go to school and major in ball lightning or plasmoids, though. The peer-reviewed paper on cavitation that Bob co-authored with lead author uh, Dr. Bin Zhuang Huang and his colleagues in Taiwan in nature, water can trigger nuclear reaction to produce energy and isotope gases. Uh, that's made a major impact on the academic world uh, and showed beyond a doubt that this widely ignored phenomena is real, uh, worthy of a lot further research and funding, and that there is no doubt that it's going to have a major impact on the entire world in the near future. This paper was followed shortly after, uh, in January 2024, by another article uh, co-authored by 11 researchers from multiple nations titled Extraterrestrial Life in Space, Plasmas in the Thermosphere, UAP, Pre-Life, Fourth State of Matter. And I'll leave you to go and read this paper in your own time if you're interested. I've linked to it in the description as usual. But if you add this paper to the weight of what Bob's been talking about, what Robert Temple's been talking about for many years now, um, even though I've only discovered him recently, uh, what we've been talking about on this channel, though, and uh, what Malcolm Bendel has, of course, been talking about uh, under relentless attack. It's undeniably clear that this is revolutionary science, uh, and it has the potential to change the current trajectory of the entire world. The other video that was published by the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project, The Problem of Ball Lightning and Its Connection with the Problem of Cold Nuclear Fusion, uh, provides us with much further evidence that we've been operating in the dark for a long time. Um, the presentation in this video, um, and I apologize, I won't attempt to pronounce the names of these speakers, uh, and the discussion between the presenter and his colleagues at the end of the video shows us quite clearly that although the study in this field of research has been suppressed in most Western countries for decades, 
Uh, this has not been the case in all countries, uh, and there's a lot we can learn from foreign researchers, such as the Russian researchers here, who've not necessarily been restricted in the same ways we have in countries like the US, UK, Europe, and Australia, etc., where most of us are from, uh, watching this channel, I mean, uh, according to the YouTube statistics. The video contains numerous examples and images of ball lightning phenomena, though. Um, it's well presented and quite clear, but of course it's all in Russian and um, you'll have to read the translated subtitles, but it's well worth it. Uh, I'd love to do a condensed breakdown of that video in English uh, in the future at some point, if I can find the time. And as always, you can help fund my open source research using the link in the description. And this directly contributes to me being able to invest the time uh, in projects like this which uh, I think could bring a lot of benefit to people. So please donate um, if you can afford to and you'd like to see more content like that. So this brings us back to, as you know, uh, one of my favorite topics, the thunderstorm generator. And it comes up quite a few times in Bob's entry live stream too. Uh, he announces some pretty far out stuff that uh, we're just going to briefly talk about. Uh, so the biggest of which is that, quoting Bob here, uh, if it does what it says on the box, uh, which it has done every step of the way so far, uh, admittedly even to Bob's own surprise, the Thunderstorm Generator is going to be mass-produced and rolled out worldwide. Uh, you'll see it retrofitted to cars, smokestacks, and exhausts all over the world. Um, Bob says in the video he's connected Malcolm with what he refers to as the most capable funding body on Earth uh, for these type of things, or one of the most capable funding bodies on Earth. Um, and essentially, if the thunderstorm generator passes the further rigorous analysis and trials it's going to be subjected to over the next month or two, um, which frankly, we're more than a little optimistic about at this point, I've got to say, um, it will have practically some, well, as much funding as it needs to get rolled out worldwide. Uh, something along those lines with Bob's world uh, words. So it's going to have all the support it needs uh, to be rolled out in a really, really massive way beyond even what I expected. Um, it's going to be used to clean up the permanent smog above cities in India, uh, potentially China, here in Australia, and it's going to change the environmental and regulatory landscape of the entire world. And this is just the beginning. Uh, the broader science of ball lightning or plasmoids provides us with a pathway to help clean up the world in a multitude of ways. The oceans, the waterways, uh, industrial, nuclear, and mining waste, toxic soils, sewage, garbage. Uh, this is all in research and development at the moment or being planned and budgeted into the future. So this is incredibly exciting stuff. Uh, India is where it's all going to happen uh, with the support of their government and authorities. Uh, the head of the Indian Navy is confirmed to be involved in the project. Um, and Milk and Bob both confirmed this, and it really sounds like India is going to be the first hub of this new technology. And this is great news for me. Um, if you've been watching the channel, you know I'm an enorm enormous fan of India. Um, amazing history, culture, architecture, science, language, art, and scriptures. And it seems fitting that the Vajra, Lord Indra's Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt uh, makes its technological return from India. I think that's really cool. So I won't go on about it anymore until we hear the next development. Um, there's still a few steps before we can see any of this happen, but uh, Milk has been hinting about something really big for the Thunderstorm Generator for a while now. And I guess after hearing Bob proclaim it too, um, the full implications have kind of hit me all at once, and I can't wait to see where it goes. So that's my most exciting news for the day. Um, but in other news, which is also exciting, uh, you can also catch another great episode of The Foxhole with George Howard on the Cosmic Summit YouTube channel. And um, this time with guests Randall Carlson and Robert Temple. This was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, talking about Dr. Temple's most recent book, The New Science of Heaven, uh, which is all about ball lining and plasma phenomena. And I thought this book was an absolutely fantastic read. Uh, you've probably heard me mention it a number of times on the channel now. So it's great to see all of this research coming together. And once again, the fusion of the related ideas of many different scientists that's rapidly occurring right now. So go ahead and uh, check out that interview to hear what Robert has to say. And uh, Randall Carlson too, uh, of course, who has, um, of course, been a major public advocate of plasma physics and the work of Malcolm Mendel. And remember that you can also catch me at Cosmic Summit 2024, along with Randall Carlson, Bob Grainier, Johanna James, a host of other revolutionary scientists and thinkers, uh, all of which you can see here on the lineup in North Carolina this June. Hit the link in the description uh, to get your ticket now, and there will be more on that in the coming week. You can even book a special longer workshop session with Malcolm Bendel uh, the next day, and you 
can be sure that you'll see me there, obviously. Highly recommend. Uh, if you're interested in these topics and you can see the huge things that are going on in the non-mainstream science right now, and in mainstream science, to be honest, it's crept in, uh, then if you can get to Cosmic Summit, come to Cosmic Summit. It's going to be a conference to remember. Cosmic Summit uh, has a, also has a huge playlist collated uh, all about plasmoids, the thunderstorm, generator, Sanskrit, mathematics, sacred geometry, ancient history. Um, again, link to in the description. So if you want to go and just binge these topics until June, you can go ahead and check that playlist out. And as usual, as well as covering the practical developments in plasmic, plasma physics, uh, I'm also working on the more esoteric aspects of the theory behind Malcolm's thunderstorm generator, uh, such as plasmoid unification model um, and the related unified sciences of geometry, music, mathematics, astrophysics, history. It goes pretty far. So I encourage everyone to go and uh, check out the video I collaborated with uh, Malcolm on. The last video I released, The Laws of Sanskrit Mathematics, sorry, there's a fly bugging me, uh, in which I begin to break down and explain the fundamentals of the way that numbers are used in Malcolm's theoretical model, uh, which was used as the basis for his practical inventions. And a few weeks ago, I also did a rare interview uh, with Edward G. Nightingale, uh, author of The Giza Template, and Brad Young of Cosmic Rex, to mark the beginning of their new research group uh, that I've also officially joined, the Template Research Group. And I'd really love for anyone who's interested in this side of things, sacred geometry, harmonic numbers, uh, how time and space relate to each other, symbolism, etymology, uh, ancient history, and the great celestial cycles, uh, come and subscribe to the Template Research YouTube channel as well. Uh, Ed's research is highly cohesive with everything I'm discussing over here. And it provides us with a veritable ocean of historical evidence that we're currently dealing with a rediscovery um, rather than something new. And just as Malcolm says, uh, and the template and the Lambert sequence uh, that Ed re recovered from Plato's Timaeus have become foundational to my own work on mathematics and sound, uh, as well as an invaluable tool to explain concepts related to the plasmoid unification model and vortex-based maths. You may see me mentioning the template quite a bit um, to explain some of these concepts. So my aim in joining the Template Research Group is both to study directly under Ed, um, as I've been doing under Marco and Malcolm, um, and I already have been uh, studying under Ed for a few months, but also to help continue to correlate uh, his voluminous rediscoveries with those of Malcolm Bendel and Marco Roden, as well as my own too. Um, so as I've said before, I personally believe that their combined teachings constitute quite a master key to mathematics and physics, and I'm very interested in building on that. So really excited to continue to work with Ed and Brad on this project. Um, Brad's worked with Malcolm before as well, so it's kind of coincidental that this all came about and um, really cool that it all happens to be connected. So it's incredibly relevant to the other work I'm doing on the Thunderstorm Generator, Plasmoid Unification Model, Vortex Space Mass. I encourage you to go check out the Template Research Group channel and subscribe. And if you find that it aligns with your own research, uh, please reach out to Ed there and get in touch. I've also linked to Brad's channel, Geocosmic Rex, down there in the description. And many of you probably know him from his own work um, or from his work with Randall Carlson and the Cosmographia podcast. So once again, the ideas that these guys are talking about, geometry, Younger Dryas, celestial cycles, uh, the architectural and geological findings, they're all topics inherently related to the technology and the mathematical side of things that we focus on here. So we're all on the search for the same holy grail from different perspectives. Take that as you will. Anyway, we are bouncing from high technology to ancient history as usual, and there really is a lot to process here. As usual, I've left you with a ton of resources to explore these topics further in the description, and I'll hopefully be back later this week with a new video following up with more secrets of numbers of the plasmoid unification model. So I'll see you then. Stay tuned for more.